Hi, Susan. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our August event. I'm so pleased to have Fabienne Raphael here with us and all of you lovely women here this morning. Fabian, hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> all right. So I'm really excited to meet uh, everyone here. And uh, as I was explaining to Phyllis uh, a little bit before we got started, um, I met Sarah Joy through just putting a message, I think, on the website. And then we started a conversation and we spoke at least like two, three times. And then it led for, for us to realize that um, yeah, I could do a presentation for the group, and I think it would it would give some value to to everyone in here. And I love to have it like very interactive. Um, so if you have questions while I'm talking, uh, put them in the chat. And I love okay. to know also like who uh, who is in the room. So it, during the presentation, like really at the beginning, I'll give you some time to uh, to to let me know like what's happening and what you're doing uh, right now and how is this presentation like, why were you curious to come in and uh, what you're looking to get out of it. Um, so, um, so yeah, so if we're, if you're ready, I'm ready to get started. So you want to wait more, Sarah or uh, Sarah Joy, or we go? I think, uh, should I go ahead and read your bio? Oh, you can do that. I can do that. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so Fabienne is a former elite athlete and athlete's mentor, both for Team Canada. And she knows what it means to be driven by achieving big goals. Fabienne is the creator of the Dream Method, an online business coach for executives, leaders, uh, former athletes, and high achievers. So she helps them monetize their experience and leverage their career into a successful online coaching or consulting business. So we're going to get a, a bit of that from Fabienne today. I'm so excited. We're so glad you're here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so I'll just share my screen with you because I have a presentation for you. Can you see it? Is it working? Yes, we're seeing it. Yeah. Should we go ahead and put in the chat a little bit about our our individual businesses while we're while we're getting um, going? Or yeah, is there a time you, for that? If you want, or like because there's a time where I ask um, right after the small introduction that I make. Okay. So it's either we do it now now or in like three four slides. Let's go with your plan. Okay. All right. So um, yes, as, I, as uh, Sarah Joy introduced me, I'm Fabienne, and welcome to the presentation, How to Leverage Your Career into a Successful Online Coaching Business, and How to Use What You Have Learned in Your Professional Career to Have a Successful Side Business That Could Become Your Next Step. Oh. Yeah, so this is actually, you are the right person to attend this because either you have a business and of course, a lot of life experience and somehow you feel that you could definitely help other people with what you know and get paid for it, but you might not know how to get started. Uh, or you are currently at a job and you're looking to expand, uh, expand your, let's say, increase your income that comes in every month and you want to keep that job, but you want also to coach or consult people with what you know. Or you already own a business or have a job, but you're also looking to add a side income to your family so you could add 1000 5000 10000 a month to help increase your revenue. So I'm Fabienne and I work with high achievers and I work with them looking to monetize their knowledge and own a coaching or consulting business that can add them multi thousands of dollars per month to their actual income and embrace the opportunity to get paid for their true value because many people who I work with, well, one of their main um, challenge at work is that they feel that they're not recognized for their true value. It's not necessarily that they don't enjoy the work that they're doing. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but they feel that they could you know, do more or earn more in that job. So I'm curious to hear, yeah, this is a time I wanna hear, what about you, what do you do? Um, and I wrote here, put it in the chat, but in fact, like if you wanna popcorn and just say uh, who you are and what you do, I would love to hear you. So unmute yourselves and you can just go ahead. 
I'll take Tell a us. second. So I work in tourism. I have worked with student tourism for um, a decade and a half at least. And then, um, you know, travel expert as well. And uh, I love yoga and Pilates and uh, nutrition and all the good stuff. Cocktails, <laughs> making them. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I could go. Okay. Um, my name is Muni Figueres, and I work as a director in a Costa Rica Foundation for Sustainability. And right now we're doing a trip to Antarctica. We're trying to get there. So wow. that's what I do, but I would love to be a coach too, to help other women raise their voice to equality. Mm. And I'm taking awesome. care of my mom right now. So that's my priority. Okay. Hi, I'm Susan Curtis. If you can hear me, my network connection is a little flaky, so I apologize for that. Um, my business is Hope Mountain Farm, and I'm interested in today's um, get together because in the past I've participated in things like workshops where I've shared my expertise um, helping new and aspiring farmers and beekeepers, but I'm really interested in in seeing what other opportunities exist for me to be able to do that remotely from Costa Rica to possibly assist people in the US as well as locals here. Okay. Awesome. I have a question. Is it a beekeepers? Um, I am a beekeeper in addition mm -hmm. to being an organic commercial grower. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I brought I'm probably the customs people and in Alajuela, we're probably most surprised by the contents of my container. I brought all my beekeeping equipment with me. Oh, wow. That's wow. Uh -huh. Well, hi, my name is Michelle Gabriel, and I am a storyteller, leadership coach, and I do online coaching with my clients as well as doing in-person workshops. But when I saw the topic and what you were going to be covering, I thought, you know what, I can always learn more. And, and so I'm very grateful to be here. Awesome. Yeah, this is Kathy. I'll echo what Michelle said. Um, forgive me for not being on camera this morning. Uh, so I am a recovering software executive and am currently, I have a, I have founded and opened a health and wellness company and I specialize in helping people struggling with autoimmune disease and chronic illness recover and find, find wellness and freedom from pain and suffering. Mm. Um, and so that is my fledgling business. So the content is definitely super interesting to me. So thanks so much for being here and doing this with awesome. us. Who else? Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. I'm Ana Guerrero and I'm, I'm many things. Um, currently I'm, I'm just working as a, as an official translator. Um, and I also recently took up the, the role of Director of Communications for PWN. Um, but I'm also a certified Vital Voices mentor. And currently I'm doing a leadership course with INCAE through Vital Voices. So I'm very interested in, in mentoring and uh, women empowerment. Awesome. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Stolte. I currently work as a, a speech therapist doing um, online therapy with uh, folks. And I'm looking to possibly ex expand to uh, coaching, just general um, uh, speech coaching with, with uh, adults and also interested in possibly moving to Costa Rica. So mm. this was the perfect event for me this morning. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Mariana Soto. I'm actually new to the Professional Women's Network. Uh, Phyllis was really kind to invite me. Um, I'm currently working uh, with a Costa Rican company with uh, exports and, and uh, marketing, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm also a writer and I I'm wanted to join today's chat to uh, learn because um, I have always been interested in, in, you know, maybe teaching different languages or uh, even translating. And, and so I think uh, online, there's a lot of possibilities out there nowadays. So 
uh, I wanted to learn more about how you can, you know, any skills that you have, how you can put them into work on that type of platform. So thank you for having me as well and inviting me. Awesome. Did everyone say something? Let me see. I think we're missing Dr. Bernard. Yeah, yes. Are you, Are you there? Oh, we can't hear you. Oh, no. She's unmuted, but we can't hear her. Can you hear her? Anyone Your audio is not working, Aww. unfortunately. We'll wait. We'll, we'll, we'll come back. Um, Phyllis, would you share about yourself, your professional trajectory? <laughs> <laughs> well, my professional trajectory took me through um, family therapy and um, social service organization administration. Mm -hmm. I retired, moved to Costa Rica in 1990. And since then, I've been having a great time networking. And that's my favorite thing. Um, my husband and I entertain a fair amount and he's busy with horticulture and music and so forth. And um, basically I'm retired and I'm not looking to become a coach, but I'm very interested in understanding it a little more. And um, I'm very happy to be meeting Fabienne this morning and look forward to the presentation. Awesome. Oh, thanks, Dr. Bernard. So she says, I'm a college instructor and I'm also an online mentor, tutor, and academic coach. Awesome. Did everyone say something? Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah, I think okay. we got to everybody. Yay. All right. Um, I don't know. I'm having problems with this. Okay. So now, now that I know what you do and also what you're looking for in that presentation, well, I'm glad because then in the examples that I give, or if you want to speak up or have an example that comes to mind or a situation, then just put it in the chat. And Sarah Joy, if I don't see it, just stop me and then, you know, so I, so we can address it. Okay. Cause Sounds sometimes good. it goes with the, with the flow and everything. I forget to check the chat. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I just wanted to show you, uh, for example, um, Annie, Annie Janelle was one of my clients and what she was doing before is she was working in the government in the healthcare and she was managing, especially when COVID happened, she was managing a lot of teams and she felt exhausted. And when she started her, uh, her coaching business, she could only allow 20 minutes a day to it. Um, and today uh, she's a full-time coach and consultant and it really brings her joy even her kids say that she changed because at that time she felt like she was not going anywhere and that her value was not recognized at her job so in the next 45 minutes what you will learn with me is the number one mistake that blocks people from launching their coaching or consulting business the winning framework that I use with my clients to help them get their own clients without hard selling and that's the favorite part, um, how to get your first five clients, even if you don't have a big audience yet, and how to get paid for your market research, and the next step to help you make this happen. So now is really the right time to get started. And you might have noticed that. And I see that there's a lot of you that have that interest because uh, you feel that you have some expertise that you want to share with others um, or maybe, and, and sometimes people have the problem with the word expert saying, am I really an expert at something? Yes, you are because your knowledge is probably something that you know more of than someone else that would love to learn what you know, right? So, so if you've been feeling overwhelmed or not confident about starting your coaching or consulting business, well, it's not necessarily 100% your fault because there's so much information online and it comes from all sorts of people. Some people are heart-centered and give you the right information and really care about you know, your results, how you learn and how you implement stuff. And some others, they just want to put some more money into their wallets, you know. Um, so some are competent, some are not. And really, if you focus on finding people who are heart centered and really are open to listening what your needs are and where you want to go and what's your what's your why and purpose behind doing all of that, then you're in the right place. OK, so. 
it's hard to make up your mind on who to believe and what to do first to get started. And that's completely understandable. But good news, it's never been a better time to start a coaching and consulting business because that market is booming. A lot of people are starting their coaching businesses. I'm not sure about the right number, but just for the pandemic with everyone like leaving their jobs, a lot of people have experimented like, um, what they they want to have more of a life that they can enjoy and they they've been wondering like if they are happy in the career that they were in so uh they are already investing a billion dollar in the coaching and consulting industry and it keeps growing so now is really the right time to get started because more and more people hire coaches or consultants and more and more people want to become coaches or consultants, right? And because yes, of the pandemic, as I said, people have reevaluated their priorities and especially how they want to work and who they want to work with and how they want to feel when they work. One of the things that I remember, um, when I was working is that uh, being an employee, sometimes I wanted to instill change or do something better, but then you need to be backed up or you need to have everyone wanting to have that in, in order for change to occur. And sometimes within an organization or if you work with a government and more and more people need to be on the same side as you, then it's harder to get change or it's harder to, to um, actually express your ideas and have them implemented. So many people have been forced to turn towards the online possibilities, especially because a lot of people now work remotely. It might be your case. Um, so they've been in touch with working from home, uh, just having the computer and an internet connection and wondering, well, if I could do my work like that, then I could definitely start something online and just add a few hours of my day doing what I love or what I would like to, uh, to develop and just add an extra income to my life. Uh, so having a coaching or consulting business, it's definitely one of these possibilities. And also the learning curve for the tech part, it's, it's gone down a lot. Like it's very easy to, to, to have a virtual call these days. You have so many options compared to what it used to be. And it's also quite simple, but not easy necessarily uh, to make thousands of dollars working online with, um, with only a year of becoming a coach. That's possible. So what you need to have is the right person to guide and help you, okay? Um, and I'm not talking about the marketers using shame or guilt <laughs> to make you sign up for their program. Uh, I hate that type of marketing, people telling you, well, you should be ashamed of yourself if you're not there yet, or you should be ashamed if you, if you don't want to invest, do this and that, or, you know, I'm really talking about heart-centered coaches to guide you. And it also seems to be like, when I when I met Sarah jo Joy and we first spoke on the phone, like I I'm a very big on energy and it was a great energy that was that was already uh in the I would not in the room but you know in the conversation and I strongly believe that you know when someone leads a group they they attract like like minded uh, people so that's also why I I feel and I know that this room is filled with people with the right energy and really sincerely looking to make a difference in other people's lives with their skills. Um, so my story is that I was stuck in a career that I was not necessarily fully happy with. I told you about, you know, sometimes wanting change and not, and not, and not having it like the quickest possible, but like very hard to get um, unfulfilled. And I was also job hopping. Um, every three years, I needed a new challenge and I had to start something new within the same career because uh, I was I was getting bored um, and that was a sign that I needed to to change something in my life um, so I had to um, hire the right coaches so many coaches uh, to shift my career and tackle my entrepreneurial life um, I had to surround myself with the right people and I did the work for shifting my mindset business and life and also like I feel it's a long it's a long-term journey. I'm a lifetime learner. Uh, so 
we all have something to learn from everyone. And uh, that's also the thing about entrepreneurship is that when you have an open mind, then each conversation, each experience becomes something that you, you know, a, a situation that you can learn from. So now I'm a full-time coach and consultant, and I work with uh, the best coaches in the industry. I used to have a podcast. Um, I was in the podcasting field from 2014 to 2019. I broadcasted 300 episodes with Marketing to Crush Your Competitors. I was featured on major publications, many of them, and reached millions of people around the world. And I love to share time with my family. So my uh, my partner, Reggie, and my two boys, Thierry and Theo. Um, I'm also a former elite athlete. Um, so I feel that the elite athlete journey has a lot of similarities with um, entrepreneurial journey. There are a lot of skills that you develop within the athletes world that you could definitely transfer uh, in the entrepreneurial journey. Um, so I played for Team Canada for 12 years and I went to two Pan Am games as a player and then one as a mentor uh, three years ago. And I also had the chance to play in Denmark uh, in Copenhagen for for two years. So that experience really brought a lot of life skills, um, I would say, in my toolbox. And uh, and I share with that experience a lot. And out of curiosity, are there any one of you that did sports in the past or do sports now? Not like a big team sport like that. No, that's... Um, and I, I have to have you tell me which, which uh, sport it's team handball that I play. Oh, handball, cool. Yes, yes. I actually already, we already played against Costa Rica, I think, at the Pan Am, Pan Am Championship, probably. Okay, what there is are handball? Some... Ha ha, see? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't know what it is. Um, it's a mix between, I would say, uh, basketball and soccer. Um, so the field is longer than basketball, like it's, it's 40 meters long, 20 meters large goalkeepers and the goalkeepers have their zone that you're not allowed to step in. But each time that you want to score, you have to jump over the defenders and shoot from, you know, six meters or nine meters. Uh, the goals are like, like indoor soccer goals, like not the big goals, like, but smaller ones. Um, and it's very dynamic. It's uh, a lot of goals, usually between 20 to 30 goals every game. It's two times 30 minutes and like stop and go, stop and go all the time. So oh, it's, it's obviously with a hand, not with a foot. Yes, with a hand. <laughs> yes, handball. <laughs> Anyways, you'll look it up if you feel like it. But uh, to me, it's the best word in the world, of course. <laughs> Uh, all right. So I have other other um, other examples to show you that it's possible. So Cable, Cable Jones used to work in architecture. Uh, he was not happy with his career path. Um, he was working 40 hours a week and he felt stuck. And someone who has like a gift uh, as a heel coach. And a lot of people had told him that heel coaching doesn't sell and he won't be able to do anything with it whatsoever. But now he's a full-time coach and he's just uh, actually focusing on helping athletes uh, with their performance as a heel coach. Um, Margaret, Margaret, she's still at work because when she started her business, she wanted to add an extra income. So she's a nurse. She's a full-time nurse, but she's also a content creator. So she loves to do that on because that's a passion of hers. And also being a nurse is another passion. But just to show you that it's also possible just to add an extra income to what you're doing now, uh, if you have a job, uh, just to uh, spice up your life a little bit. Um, so there are many coaches over there who breathe complexity you know you might have heard about having a funnel or implementing a gazillion strategies and having the hustle mentality I used to be a hustler uh, hustle mentality um, adopter uh, but I don't believe in that anymore um, and it's because it's just because like um, you know the hard work and all that stuff pushing through even if you're tired uh, and stuff it's not um long term it's not going to serve you and i've heard many people talk about wellness in here and i'm sure you agree with me on that 
Um, so what makes my approach different is that I value simplicity. Uh, one of my zone of genius is to be able to take complex and, be, and bring it back to very simple or picturing stuff so you can understand it very quickly. So focusing on the things that matter the most and that will bring you the clients the quickly as possible. That's important. So, okay. So now we're going to the nitty gritty. So are you ready to dive in? And this is where you have to say yes or act like you're interested. Or you're yes, interested. yes. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> okay. yes. Woo! I started it. Okay. All right. So what do you think is the biggest mistake to avoid when you start your coaching or consulting business? You can popcorn and tell me what you think it is. We start too fast start too fast oh wow if that would be a problem i would be happy actually starting too fast is not a problem to me i think it's a good thing it's a good thing um unrealistic goal unrealistic goals that's what you said uh, dr bernard um that's not what i'm looking for but i understand what you mean and i think we need a little bit of that when we go into entrepreneurship like we have to have the attitude that we can rule the world and save everyone uh, because if we don't have that excitement, I think it's very quickly, like, we'll just, you know, we'll just not pursue our journey. I think lack of focus is a big issue. So thinking, like you said, thinking you're going to help everybody. It's like, well, no, you're not going to help everybody. So <laughs> thinking, who is your customer? Who's your client? Who's yeah. your ideal client? And really niching that down. Yeah, that's a good one also. Uh, but that's not, that's not the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for, um, one. I would say not placing a high enough value on what you're offering, undervaluing yourself. Yes. Yes. And that, see, that's a bit part of what I'm saying about like waiting for clarity. Um, there's never a perfect time to start. So some people, they push them out of business without even getting started because in their head, like, as you said, well, they lack value or they think like, let's say they think they're going to help everyone, but then they get overwhelmed because having a plan for that is kind of like very hard and complex. Um, so, so they don't even make a first step to get started because they get stuck in their head and they're just, um, it leads to analysis paralysis because it's, it's scary and it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's difficult for them. So if you don't do that, then if you never take action, then your business never gets out there and you took yourself out of business before even getting started. So the key is to hire coaches and mentors to help you guide you on that path to shorten the time you take to get there, but also like to surround yourself with like-minded people. And that's why I love, you know, meeting and, and being a part of professional groups where um, the mentality or the mindset of all the members is is very similar, like ambitious people or wanting to do more or open to learn. And like, like in here, a lot of people say, well, I have these skills, you know, I could help other people. I have that passion. So why not share it with the world? So do you recognize making that mistake? Like, like who, who has done that mistake in the past or I don't know. Yeah. Mariana, you did. No one else, just Mariana and myself. Okay. Anna too, it seems. I think it's more Anna. like just waiting for that clarity, like you were saying, like you're you're waiting to to have the right tools or the right uh, information to start, and it's like you're you're never gonna have all the information. Exactly, exactly. And and for me, for example, like I find that when it happened. Um, you know, while it was, it was in my head, um, I was always, I guess be, because of my background and because of the, the outreach journey that I had, like I always expected that I would know everything right from the start. So to me at that point, if I didn't know it all to get started the right way, the first time, then I would want to risk it type of, so a little bit of the perfectionist mentality. Um, so a lot of people who are perfectionists like that, or who believe that they have to get it all sorted out before getting started, then yeah, they're stuck and they're not doing anything. 
So let's dive into the most exciting part, which is leverage your career. So I'm going to share with you four steps uh, that you could, you could implement in order to get to actually reaching your first uh, four or five clients of having your coaching or consulting business. And things have to be, of course, like you'll, you'll understand like the, the clarity will come as we go through these steps, but right here, right now, and with what you shared just at, in the introductions, sharing the introductions, I know that you already know what you're great at. So it's just a matter of, of finding like, who are these people you can share that with and, uh, and how you could, you could charge your service, how much you can charge your services. Right. Um, so of course you have to be willing to embark on the personal development journey. Um, there is to me, like entrepreneurship is, the, is the best personal development journey there is right after parenting. Um, I don't know if there are parents here, but I feel that, uh, parenting is, oof, it's, uh, yeah, it's the biggest one for me. Um, and then, yeah, having a business. <laughs> um, so the action, first action is to know your zone of genius and to know the transformation that you provide uh, for people. Um, so you take them from this to that. And I'm talking about transformation because most of the time when you market your services or you express what you do, people don't really care about, you know, um, the credentials that you are, that you have, or uh, the years of experience that you have, they just worry about, okay, are, are you able to help me get rid of that problem or to bring me from this to this? Okay. For example, from obese to fit or from broke to final financially independent or from stressed out to calm and serene or from no business to actually having a business up and running and clients coming in and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so you have to make sure though, that the problem that you're solving is something that people are already actively looking to solve. And that's a problem. Sometimes people have They're like, Oh, I have this great idea and I want to sell this. Okay. But you want to sell this, but are people already investing into that market and are people already paying for it? Like if they're not, then you might be doomed to fail. And then there's this other thing where people are like, well, I can't become an extra coach because the coaching market is already filled with many people. It's saturated. Well, the, I think there's an audience for everyone because you're unique and you don't have the same personality or the same knowledge, exactly the same knowledge or the same methods as someone else. And most of the time people do business with you because of who you are. Uh, and of course, like if you can help them solve that problem, but first like to see if they fit with you and your personality. And now I neglected the chat. I just want to check if I forgot something. Oh, there's a quote. Perfection is the enemy of the good. Yeah, exactly. I so agree with that one. Perfect. Okay. Moving on. So what's your zone of genius and what transformation you want to provide? Uh, I'll give you some time to think about it and then you can just share. Or if you know it right now, just popcorn and share. Natalia says teaching. That's your zone of genius. And what transformation do you provide? When people start with you, it's from not knowing to do what to actually being able to do what or something else. Oh, learning a new language. Awesome. Okay. So, so in... In what you expressed there, um, if I take my situation, for example, so I want to learn how to speak Spanish and I've done many classes and online classes. And I think that what will unlock it for me is when I'll finally move to Costa Rica and be in an environment where I hear only Spanish and I can't speak English. And then things will start clicking because I learned a lot of stuff, but for some reason I can't, my, my speech is still not like fluent or anything I really have to be stuck and use my hands a lot and try to reach out to these words in my head to be able to communicate in Spanish 
Um, so, so Natalia, for example, like for me, what would be appealing in your service would be if, you know, you take me from very unsure about a language to speak confidently with whoever I want, like in that new language. So it's not only learning the language because I'm learning the language, but I still don't, I, I'm still stuck like expressing myself and being confident enough to speak with everyone in Spanish. You understand what I mean, Natalia? Yes, absolutely. Okay. For sure. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Michelle, is that how I pronounce your name? Because now I'm like, I'm not sure. It is. It is. It looks like Michelle, but it is Michelle. Oh, and you're cool. one of the few people that have pronounced it correctly. <laughs> First off, so I'm very impressed. <laughs> Helping people un unearth, shape, and communicate their stories for impact. Beautiful. I love it. Kathy, helping people feel less pain, live more fully, and stop letting chronic illness keep them from living full life. I love this too. Oh my God. And I'm thinking, because I have a background in physical therapy. I don't know if I said that my career was like physical therapist. Um, so I, I totally get it people with chronic pains and chronic illnesses. I mean, that's huge. Living full life for them, it's like, it's huge. Awesome. Anyone else wants to share? You can, you can also speak, like have your mic on and speak. No? What else wants to share? Okay, moving on. So now we go into action two, which is develop your framework. And what a framework is, it's a series of steps that you take your clients through in order to help them get results, okay? And sorry, when you have a proven framework, it will do 90% of the selling for you and it will bring clarity to your audience and prospects when you market your business. See, so we we're talking about clarity at first and it's one of the, you know, of the, of the, the problems that people wait for before getting started. But then when you actually have that business, if it's not clear to you how you're going to lead your clients into getting these results, then you will express what I call confusion marketing. You will try to say what you're doing or you'll express things maybe in a longer form than it's supposed to be because it's not clear in your head the path that you're going to take with your clients in order to get these results, okay? So before even getting a client or even before talking about what you do, you have to be clear on, on that, on what's your framework, because when you express it, you express yourself with more confidence and also you show to your people that you express it with, that you have a clear path to getting to that goal. And for them, it feels more secure and it feels like, okay, they can trust you into being the right person to do business with, okay? So, so is it kind it, of like a plan of action? Dr. Exactly, Bernardus? exactly. And, and right in a second, I'll share with you what my framework is and then you'll understand, uh, you'll understand a little bit more clearly what, what, what it is, like how it could, it could look like. Um, so it will allow you to feel comfortable and confident that you can get people results. And when you get on the phone, you'll be also able to clearly express to your clients how they can get these results. So for example, like, okay, so when you work with me, we go through uh, this process together and it has to do with this, this, and this, or, you know, three, three steps or five steps or however, but not like 30 steps because you lose the person, but you have to be concise into telling them like what what the what is the journey they're going to go through in order to get these results and not like coaching them right away or telling them exactly everything that you're going to do with them but being clear enough for them to say wow this person knows what she's doing and yes i want to sign up with her because she's the right person to help me out okay so my process is called the dream method and this is what i lead my clients um, through whenever they work with me either on a group setting or uh, on a one-on-one -on -one setting so it's just a level of support that they have more of or not so dream is uh each letter of the word dream means something and i love to say that the dream method plus your high achiever mindset brings you to your coaching empire 
And most of the time I work with people who have the high achiever mindset. So they aim for more, uh, they, they move despite the challenges, like they have strong work ethics and they love to implement what they learn. Okay, so to me, for example, the dream method, the D is for, um, is for design your dream offer that only attracts your dream clients because you know that your offer is the core of your business and you have to hit that one right if you want to be able to sell something to uh, to your audience. The R is to reinforce your sales skills to convert your leads into clients. So selling is an art and there's also a way for when people come to you and are leads uh, to actually um, lead the conversation to make them realize that they have to take a decision if they want to invest with you or not. Um, I don't believe in forcing a sale and I don't believe in convincing people to do business with you because to me, it's like, it's just a uh, leading with the bad energy. When someone is forced to do something, I feel that the relationship is already unbalanced at the beginning and it might lead to something very disappointing. Um, the E is to enhance the know, like, and trust factor. And I spoke about this a little bit earlier, saying that when people sign up with you, they sign up with you because of who you are, because of your personality, because they trust that you're the right person to help them out, and because they know about you and they like you. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I ever signed up with someone I didn't like. Or if along the way it happened that I didn't like that person anymore, then I would have to, you know, stop working with that person because I feel it's it's extremely important. Um, so when you buy something or when you buy from someone, if you don't have that attitude or if you don't feel like you like that person, you trust them and you know they're going to help you out, then you just don't sign up with them. The A is to add many clients to your business with your personalized marketing strategy. And I love to say personalized because I feel like, these people telling you that there's a cookie cutter strategy to to do everything i think it's a it's a it's a lie because we are all different and we don't shine in our marketing in the same way so now i'm expressing like how i work with my clients with my framework but each of these clients they also have a, a different path so um, the framework gives you an idea of the path that is taken, but it's not true that each of my clients will market the same way uh, because I will evaluate like what their strengths are or how they need to show up, which, which platform is better for them and stuff like that, right? So no cookie cutter, but thinking about, you know, how you're going to add your clients to your business. And then the M is to make all clients your forever fans. So you don't want your clients to only have like a one-time deal with you. Um, and a lot of people forget about that. I feel like when, when businesses always have to invest and inject a lot of money in their marketing for new clients and there's no client retention, it says a lot about like the type of service that you provide for these people, right? Because when you serve your people pretty well and you, and you help them get their results, well, they want to come back and work with you again and again. Um, I, I had a uh, uh, I had a loyal client that came to me like each I would say every two years you know we would work together and then two years later he was at a different step or level in his business and he would come back and say okay can we work together again to work on this and if you have not thought in advance about how you can support your clients in the longest run and to increase their lifetime value of working with you, then yes, this is where we give it some thought and we see like where this could lead if you if you support your clients in, in different level of their business. So let me know in the chat if you do already have a specific framework or if it's something that you would need to work on and if you want to share about it. Or if what I said has, has got you thinking about something, if you want to share it, now's the time. Dr. Bernard did ask a question um, about developing a, a foundational plan of action for all your clients and then individualized to each client. I, I believe you were touching on that just a minute ago. Yeah, exactly. So you have like the, you have this, this, the, the main idea, the big idea in your head and you know how you want to lead your people, 
But of course, like you can't take each client the same thing. It's like when we have kids, we might have like two, three kids, but there are three different personalities. So what you've done or implemented as your core, well, your core values stay the same, but you don't teach the core values the same way to each of your kids, depending on how they respond to your parenting. So it's exactly the same thing in, in business. So you have that big idea, you have that framework. But then each client that comes in, it's not true that you're going to take that same plan and say, okay, it's exactly the same thing for her, for him, for it's, it's different. So yeah, you have to, you have to personalize that. Other questions or anyone else like wants to share if they already have a framework? I have a question. Yes. Do you, do you prefer to work one-on-one -on -one or you, you prefer to do a mix of four or five people or your groups are bigger i'm shy uh, so i'm i'm really good at one-on-one -on -one, but in big groups I'm, I'm shy okay okay so i mean there's something for for everyone what i mean is that if you feel comfortable expressing like or coaching people only one-on-one -on -one, then you do that because it suits who you are and it suits what you want to do right uh for me i do both and i get and I get fulfilled with both because it's really different. When you coach people one-on-one, -on -one, you are in kind of like a more private setting. So the people might be more uh, open to say and share stuff than when you are in a group. But then when you are in a group, the thing is the synergy or the energy of each individual add up. And then there's something beautiful that might come out of that group too. You might find like great friendships, ac accountability and stuff like that. But for me as a coach, uh, um, being in front of groups is also very fulfilling because each person brings their own energy, experience and opinion uh, in the calls. And I feel that the learning that you can have there is also beautiful. So there are advantages for, for both. But as you said, if you're, if, you will feel more confident getting started only with one-on-one, -on -one, then that's what you should do. And in fact, I advise all my clients who want to start a coaching business to start with one-on-one. -on -one. And I'll tell you a little bit more about this uh, in, in a few slides, but you understand why. Yeah. Is that okay? Did I answer? Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Other questions? Okay. So let's say that you're starting your coaching and consulting business and you have more framework, no framework. So what will happen is that you'll feel overwhelmed and you have a lack, a, you'll lack a sense of clarity and you won't be able to sell with confidence. You'll feel like something's missing. And I told you at the beginning, like I'm a strong believer in energy. And when something's not clear or not right in your head, then it shows in your energy. And you might wonder like, why would people won't buy from you? But if, if you're, you're, um, your face expression or your nonverbal signs are like something's something's off, then people will feel it and they'll just not buy from you. So having a framework really, really increases like the confidence you have in selling your services. So if you do that, then yes, increase revenue because you'll be able to sell more uh, and the financial bandwidth to leave your job if this is what you want to do or add an extra income if this is when, what you want to do or just Start another business if that's what you want to do and start living your desired lifestyle. The other one, uh, the other action is to actually reach out to your actual network. So that's how you could get actually five, your first five clients without any complex technology or salesy sales calls or cold calls. People tend to forget that using simple outreach on social media or through your current connections to reach people is an easy thing to do. And in fact, you just let the framework do the selling. Um, and what I mean by that, for example, on social media, if you are expressing through your content, like, um, you know, how you lead your clients to getting the results or sharing about you, about what you're experimenting or your lessons learned or um, your values, um, people get to know you eventually and trust you. And then if you, if you also, you need to also share things that has to do with what you want to coach or how you help your people or um, the transformation you already helped someone gain, then when people see that, well, it just increases your authority and um, 
your authority as an expert. And then when they are ready to do business with you, they can come. But whenever, like, let's say if you reach out to your current connections, you're not necessarily reaching out to the perfect client yet, but you might, you might reach out to people who would refer you other people. So one of the things that people do, and that's a mistake also, is that you you keep your business as your best kept secret or you have like all this expertise within you and you can help others with your skills and you're not doing anything with it or you just feel like oh let me just wait a little bit or let me keep it small and not say anything well people can't guess guess what you're doing if you're not expressing it enough and and sometimes i remember that at a certain point i had i really had problems showing up when i got started on social media and then i asked I was asking people um, that I met, like what they thought I would do, what they thought I was doing. And they were never clear on what I was doing because I was not showing up in confidence or I was not showing up enough expressing like what I could really do to help people. Um, so, so yeah, just simple outreach, uh, reaching out to uh, people like, for example, like just in here in that network, um, if you express to the others what you do, who you're looking to partner with, not necessarily like, okay, introduce me to my next client. No, but what if, for example, for me, I'm a I'm a, an online business coach and I and you know who I help. So most of the time I love to um to connect with career coaches because career coaches, they help people, let's say, who want to um, start their career the right way, or if they're thinking about a career shift, then they get, they help them get clear. And then out of these career coaches, if they have clients who decide, well, I want to start a coaching business, then yes, they could call me and say, well, you know what, like this person I spoke to, I just did the work with, with her and she wants to start a coaching business. So her next step would be to get coaching for that. So uh, can I refer you that client? right? So you also have to think about, okay, who are the people that I could connect with who work with the same audience as I am? And then, you know, we could, we could refer clients to each other and then getting started like that could, could definitely help. I have a few comments. Uh, new clients from recommendations from other parents. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and you ask, you asked uh, Sarah Joy, what kind of posts did I answer? Like when I said, you know, sharing the work that you do, sharing your values, uh, sharing your life experiences. What would it maybe like get, give me an example of what a current one is or, or something that your wording that you might say about yourself? Uh, okay, so uh, so for example, one of my latest posts that I had on social media was about creating your luck, um, and I I just expressed that throughout my life and my journey, either when I was at school or when I did sports, well, people could would always come up to me and say, "Oh, you're so lucky. You always have good grades, or you're so lucky. You you get to travel to several countries for competition." Or you're so lucky, I mean, you have clients, but like behind that luck, uh, there's a ton of work, you know, so good grades don't come like that if you don't study or getting selected on Team Canada. Well, I had to earn my spot on the team and I had to be selected for each competition I attended, right? So to other people, it might sound like luck, but to me, it's like uh, a, a lot that I worked for, Right. Um, so when I share that that uh, that thought, it's just like I wanted to to show the people that they have their the power to create the luck that they want to have in life. So for someone who wants to start a business or who wants to have a consulting or coaching business, well, if they do the work um, right now, then yes, it might end up for them to have a few clients or to leave their job if that's what they want to do, or just to add an extra income to their household if that's what they want to do, but they have to create that luck. So that's an example that I can give you. Like that's one of the latest posts that I have. Okay. Um, something I've seen a lot is uh, uh, I do follow several coaches in there. They have very dense content. Like it's, I don't know, a full page of, of content where it goes into a deep story. Um, is that kind of, I guess, is there a reason for why it's so dense? <laughs> oh, I think, I think it goes with, with each and every people's style and how, 
their audience is uh, is used to consume the content. So some audiences like short content and some others like it's longer and deeper. I think it has to do with, you know, you knowing exactly who you're speaking to. Like, for example, if you want to buy a product and you've been looking for that product for, for several months, you don't care if you receive uh, 10 publicities from that same product, you'll read it all because that's your interest and you're their target market and you don't care about reading 10 pages. But if it's something very annoying to you and you keep seeing that ad on Facebook, you'll be you'll be fed up and you'll click on the don't show me this ad again because it's it's annoying to you and you feel overwhelmed by it or you just don't want to see it anymore. So I think that the length of the post or what the post is, is talking about, it has to do with the type of um, of research you've done with your market and of you knowing exactly what your what your market wants to hear more of or how you have to show up in front of your market that's that's what's behind it so when you see those long posts if you don't want to read that it's just because you're not their target audience but their target audience will definitely read it it's like when you're selling something and there's a sales page that is like I don't know, six pages long. Like some people read the six pages. It's because they are their target market. Okay, I have other questions. Uh, referrals over the past 40 years of being an entrepreneur, my biz has always come by way of referral. That's awesome, Michelle. But I think there's an opportunity to use social media more effectively. Yeah, I don't think... I used to believe that, you know, you needed to be there uh, and post like several times a day and stuff. Um, but now I'm more on the energy side of things. I feel like if your energy is right and your intent is legitimate and if you you know how you how your market, uh, you know your market pretty well, then when you express something, you trust that the right people will read it, connect with it, and then eventually when they're ready to buy, they will connect with you. Um, so so you don't, I don't feel like you have to be everyone, everywhere and talking to everyone. In fact, like someone said that at the beginning, like it's important that you have your specific person that you're reaching out to and you only talk to that person each and every single time you uh, you share your content. Um, let me see what else. So uh, as you're as you're teaching coaches how to find their ideal client, do you have kind of a worksheet or go through some steps to to find that ideal client with them to make exactly. sure that they are exactly. targeting? Yes, yes, absolutely. Do you have because any tips? Again, like for us for what we could do just kind of to be thinking about it and getting i guess farther along that step because well, okay so at the beginning i asked like you know if you knew what your uh, your zone of genius was and what transformation you can provide um so the first thing that is important to do is to actually reach out to a few people that you feel are your target market and ask them questions uh, ask them questions about, uh, you know, what is their main challenge uh, in your, let's say, in your market or in in what you're doing right now, and uh, what they wish would go better, or you know, what is a pain in their lives right now in that um, in that specific industry, for example, and then you get some answers. But you also like, if it's a call, then you record the call because you need to have their words. Because when you when you market your services, while well, it's important that you have that you use words or expressions that will feel that people will relate to, or else you'll have the impression that you speak and nobody is listening in your room. Um, so uh, so yeah, that that's one example. So if you have that idea, or if you know you can solve that problem, and if you've never asked people, uh, then it it will be hard to market effectively or to have the right messaging. For your business because you you haven't asked your clients or people who might buy from you what specifically they're looking for and how they express themselves um, experimenting that specific issue yeah that's that goes along very well with what i've worked on with my avatar um dr bernard has said uh how do you fabian do you, how do you leverage social media the thing, the thing about social media is that what we forget to do is that if you get interaction on your 
let's say on your posts, well, you leave it like that and then you don't do anything. So um, to leverage social media the best way possible, I feel that you have to engage into con many conversations. Um, when you see that someone is always there, always commenting or always uh, liking your stuff uh, and you check what that person is doing and then you you show genuine interest also to what that person is doing and you end up like having a conversation and it doesn't have to start with I want to sell you my services because that's that's very harsh but you start it with like um, the genuine um, desire to connect with someone else who's interested into what you're sharing with the world then that conversation can lead to that person expressing that you know, they need your help. Or uh, if you ask the right questions, then they might express, yeah, I've been having that issue for X, Y, and Z time. And then you might say, well, okay, I can help you out with that. Can you, can we take that to a phone call? But I feel like it's a, a social media, like it's, it's rare that let's say if someone likes your post today and it's the first time you can jump on the conversation right here, right now with that person, unless the person says it right away, I've been looking for what you're offering and then I want to get on a call with you. Okay. Um, also social media, like it's, it's a great way to share what you know and to, and to increase your credibility and authority. Um, for example, like on my end, I use a lot of, uh, I, I work more on my YouTube channel now because I want people to feel my energy when I teach something. I want them to be able to see what I can share with them. Because again, I said, I'm huge, I'm huge on energy and I want to make sure that the people I attract are like the right fit for my business. So there, of course, there's a process of, okay, if you want to work with me, then you have certain questions to answer. And then I see if, if that person is really serious about getting started. And then we get on a call and that's the whole sales process. And if you were, we are a great fit, we work together. But I feel that social media is a great opportunity to be able to do that at a larger scale. Um, and of course, like focusing on where your people are on social because they're not necessarily on every platform. Yeah. Okay, other questions? Perfect. Just give me a minute. My mouse seems to disappear. I have seen people screen. using YouTube, but not maybe as much. I, I really like the fact that you're you're make, using that as a conversation mm -hmm. and to share the energy. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, so as I said also before, people tend to forget that one of the simplest ways to sell is to get into a conversation. And when you have strategically shared your framework with them, it becomes a natural decision for your potential client to sign up for your program, see? And that's where the mistake is. If on social, you only share about personal stuff and you never share about um, what you can do to help people. In fact, they'll like you, but they don't know if they can trust you to get them results with your business because if you never express it, then they won't know. So when you have the right materials that perfectly describe and invite people to work with you, selling becomes easy. You don't have to force it. You don't have to convince people. And you have to make sure though that the people you reach out to are people that can help, that you can help, but also who recognize you for who you are and what you do. So uh, convincing people to me is just like, I know you've been in that situation before, you know, you don't want to buy and someone keeps talking and talking and talking and in your head, you're like, well, I don't want to, I'm not interested. So both of you are wasting, you're wasting time. And that person is wasting a very precious energy into convincing you to buy something that you don't want at the first place. So make sure that each time you engage into a conversation with someone to make sure that that person already knows a little bit about you, right? And wants to know more 
because there's much more work to be done um, if like it's very cold and you didn't have any introductions then uh, then when you had that person had the opportunity to consume your content or see you do videos or see you at a workshop like that you were leading and stuff like that um, so that's why you know someone expressed earlier that you get Dr. Bernard right you get a lot of referrals through um, through parents and stuff or through people that you know because that's warm leads if a friend of yours comes and says well you should do business with with her because I've known I, I've I've tried her services and she does a very great job. Then yeah, you will be more uh, prompted to maybe connect with that person compared to someone you don't know at all. Okay, so right now I want you to think, and you don't have to answer now. Um, just take like a minute or two to think if you have um, people in your network right now who are a perfect fit either for your offer or people who could refer you uh, clients who have the same audience as you and that you could partner with to refer clients to each other. So just I'll give you just like a few seconds to think about it. If you can list like a few names, five to 10 names. So did you find some people? I just want to I just want to know yes or no. You can put it in the chat. Good. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Um Steve is one of my former clients who I reached out to on social media and we started chatting. It was 4 a.m. Uh, I just had my my last uh, my last uh, boy and uh, I was breastfeeding and then he was falling asleep so I couldn't put him down yet. And uh, I saw a post that he wrote and we started chatting and it, he ended up being a client who came to work with me many times within many years. Um, and it all started with a simple conversation. And of course he was surprised that at 4 a.m. I was on my phone and I was like, yeah, same for you, like what's up? And he was having insomnia and I was breastfeeding and it all started like that. Another example is Jessica. Um, she was paralyzed for years. Um, she She's a nurse, so she has a side business even today. Um, and when we started talking, she was like, I have that idea in my head since like 25 years. And she thought that she needed extra credentials while at the hospital she was working in, like she was the head of a department and she was responsible for the education. And she was the go-to person for a lot of nurses around there, but she still thought that she needed extra credentials. Um, and that kept her 20 years from getting started with her business. And now she has uh, a health and wellness business today. Um, and then finally, the step four is to gather the results and share, uh, share those to get even more clients. Nothing sells like results. And a lot of people say, well, I didn't start working as a coach yet, so I don't have any testimonials. Well, you've helped people in your life, right? So you go back to the people you helped. And if, if it's not necessarily with your coaching, but they have felt a certain way, having your the help from you and they appreciate you for, for some reason, and they can express that through a testimonial. And it could be written, it could be a video, it could be an audio testimonial, but like you always have someone that you help. And when you want to become a coach or a consultant, or when you are one, it's in you, it's part of your DNA. Okay. So if you start implementing what you've learned today to like just 10, 15 people, the odds that you could sign a client or more or add a few thousand dollars a month to your income with your iron offer are higher, of course. So if you're charging like a thousand a month and you get five clients, then it's $5,000 a month, which is great. So just think about it, um, where you've shared what you do yet and where else you can do it. Like just just write down that question. And uh, I, I just look at my watch here and I want to go on. Uh, but, uh, but just like think about it eventually, like 
is there a way that you could share even more of what you know or what skills that you have in order to attract more people to your message? So what happens when your clients start getting results with your help? Well, they, they talk about you to everyone they know, and that's called free marketing. That's the cheapest part of marketing that you can have um, because they're excited. Uh, they love you. Uh, they like your work and they are ready to talk about you to everyone they know and they refer you clients. Okay. So when you over deliver and when you provide, you help your clients get results, then it's a great thing. So if you avoided the biggest mistake and implemented the four action steps, um, so the four action steps were um, to identify your zone of genius and the transformation you provide, create your framework, use outreach, and build authority by sharing your results. Uh, do you feel that you could be successful with your coaching and consulting business? You definitely could. So you could be a full-time entrepreneur or part-time, depending on what you choose, serve clients with your zone of genius, confidence you can help your clients and manage your schedule, take days off or control your schedule as you want and spend more time with your family, enjoying your journey, living your purpose. Um, so a lot of people have done that path and still doing that path as a coach, as a consultant, and it could definitely be done by you. Uh, if you follow the right steps. So it's never been simpler to make over $100,000 a year as an online coach. And of course, it has to be with implementing the right strategies, but also pricing your, your, your services accordingly. So while you've learned a lot today, maybe there are chances of you succeeding alone are not as great as you think. Maybe you would ask yourself questions about your framework. How does it look like, especially in your business? Or if you could, if what you should say if you're reaching out to clients and they say no, or, or to make sure that you reach out to the right people. Um, so what do I do if I start getting no's and I need to adjust? And that's why high performers and high achievers, they always hire coaches and they surround themselves with like-minded people. Um, so thinking about that group and also about what I shared and also about the skills that you have, um, if I could offer you a way to quit your job, if that's what you want to do, or replace your income, if that's what you want to do, or add an extra income to what you already have now and launch your dream coaching business without complicated technology and scary selling strategies and doing other eight weeks, would you be interested? So I want you to reply to yourself. Would you be interested? So before I, I made that presentation, I had a conversation with, uh, with Sarah Joy and I was like, well, you know, if there are many people who are interested into transferring their skills, well, what if we create something uh, tailored to, to the group? Um, so that's what that's what I'm willing to do for the group. And it's called the Coaching Biz Accelerator. It's something that I've already done in the past, but I, I, I could definitely uh, tailor towards like what your group uh, definitely need. So you will launch your coaching business using the dream method. And I told you about the dream method already during the presentation. So what we will do during that coaching biz accelerator, other than having one live group call with, with me for one week, uh, for six weeks, and then one private call at week seven, uh, you'll have a few bonuses. So the opportunity to get all your questions answered with a Q&A live stream. So during each and every single week, by the end of the week, you give me all your questions and I make sure to answer all of them uh, in a private Facebook community for accountability and support. And what I love to do in my group coachings also is assign people together to have accountability calls each and every single week to make sure that everything is worked on and implemented. Um, and if you are one of the five people to pay and, and, uh, for the program, then you can get an extra one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me that you can take within, uh, the seven weeks of the program or one month later. So if you want to have like some more support after the course is over and you're part of these five people, then it will be possible to have like that extra call one month later. So what it implies, it's six hours of training, uh, which is a value of 3000 
the Facebook community, 500, and the coaching calls, the group coaching calls, 1500, which is a $5,000 offer. So even if that course was like $5,000, would it be worth the investment to you? Because I feel that just with one or two clients, you can have that investment back. So you can have your high-end offer attracting a flood of dream clients and your coaching business up and running and serving clients and your personalized marketing strategy and a place to stand out with your uniqueness, finally living your purpose and having a plan to enter your life's next chapter with enthusiasm and purpose. So I told you about the value of it, but for this group and because uh, because I love the energy of that group, it would be $333 for the seven weeks of support. Um, so if you are interested on signing up for that program, this is the link, bit.ly forward slash CBA Costa Rica. I made this link just for you guys. So what I, I can we need do it is- in the chat because I'm yes. not able to click. Let me just go and get it. I have to stop sharing. Perhaps while you add that link, I might ask a question. Um, yes. And thank you, Fabian, for coming today and, and sharing your expertise on, you know, how to successfully do an, an online business like this. But I guess for, for me, at least the biggest challenge would be knowing how to sell what you know and believing that you do have something to offer and bring to the table. Because I think at the beginning, you were saying that one of the most important thing is being willing to, to sell your services. And, and I think something that goes along with that is knowing how much to charge and how much to, or how to market yourself and your skills. And I'm, I'm guessing that's something that you learn as you go, but I, I, I think that might be like, you know, and a lot of people do have, um, obviously like their, their degrees and their, uh, certificates and their, um, they are experts in their field, but translating that into a social media platform or an online platform, I think is definitely challenging mm -hmm. to do. Okay. So, so from there are two things with what you're saying is like, first of all, like having the belief that people are going to actually buy your services. And then the second thing, like market these services uh, the right way. So you attract the right people to your, to your business. Right. So like the first thing that, that I can't change is actually your belief to know that you can help others. If you're not a hundred percent sure that you can lead people to get results, whatever you're doing, uh, right now won't work because your energy is not towards like, I can definitely help someone with my skills. Okay. So to help you out with that, let's say if, uh, we take two kids in elementary school, one is in third grade and one is in sixth grade. Well, the third grade kid looks up to the sixth grade kid with admiration because they're, you know, they know more stuff or they've learned more stuff, for example. And they're like, oh, I wish, you know, I knew what that person knows now. So right now you probably already have all the skills necessary to help someone who doesn't have the skills you actually have. So just like if you don't compare yourself to people who have, let's say, more experience or who've done more than you or who've been in business for 10 years, right now there's someone who might be interested into investing with you. So just seeing or thinking about that only that one person, that one dream client of yours that you can help and just speaking to that specific person could help you out, like just overcome this thing about the belief that you could help that person. Of course, you can help that person. But again, like it has to start from, from you or else all type of effort that you will put on it is just, you know, you'll be frustrated. But as soon as you're confident, hey, you know, I know these skills. I know I've been doing that for X amount of years or I've helped someone do that or whatsoever. And you know that you can get them these results. Your energy will be so different. And when you speak to people, they will feel the confidence you have to help them out and they'll sign up with you. Definitely. 
And then the part about uh, about how to market that on social media, I said it a little bit earlier. It, it goes through like the right market research um, and also like knowing exactly what's the main pain that your client is actually experiencing right now and making sure that you're solving that pain and getting them into, you know, the transformation from not having that to having it or feeling depressed and be like confident and happy and fully living their lives and stuff like that. Thank you for that. Um, that makes a lot of sense. And it, it definitely it relates to knowing how to like knowing yourself enough that, you know, what you can offer and how you can offer it and and then believing that you can do that exactly thank you yeah. uh sarah joy you have another question sure i think that living in costa rica i mean we many of us do have an international network and we know people from all over but i can say like my concern right off the bat is that you know just the baseline you know you've said maybe, you know, each coaching client would pay $1,000 a month. Well, $1,000 a month is over the monthly average income in Costa Rica. So, I mean, can you speak to that a little bit? I, I feel like, you know, my network in Costa Rica would not pay that. And so I would yeah. have to have lower prices or I don't know. Exactly. So, I mean, it's not rare also that people have different packages depending on who you know, which audience they are speaking to. So if you are in front of an audience that uh, usually like, let's say for people paying a thousand dollars in the US, if that is equivalent of 250 for Costa Ricans, then so be it. Um, the important thing is that you are, uh, you are aware of, of that difference. Uh, second thing that you know, you could also ask your clients when you do, when you do your market research and you ask people, you can also ask like, what investment will you be willing to do for that service, for example? Then it gives you like an idea of the type of money that the people will invest. Uh, also, when you evaluate who else does that in your market, then you see how much they, you know, they, they invest already in that market. And then you see like what feels comfortable to you also. You know, if you're in front of your audience and you say a thousand dollars and you feel uncomfortable because you're like, I know it's too much for them, then they won't buy anyways. So what is comfortable enough for you to say it with confidence and you know that it will be appealing to your audience. So if it's two hundred dollars a month, then so be it. And then eventually, like with with uh, more and more clients that you get or if you expand internationally or even if you stay local, but you will attract you will attract more and more people and then it will be logical that you increase your prices because you'll get so much like social proof and authority that people will be willing to invest more to work, you know, with you. So that's how I would address it. Yeah, I can definitely see that. And would you maybe consider doing more group sessions so that you're less, I guess, the one-on-one? -on -one exactly. Because have more then people? if... If your reach is to get like, let's say if you want to have a thousand dollars a month and then you know that people will invest 200, then you can still reach that a thousand dollar, but you just ask five people and then you do group coaching. Definitely. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you're, you've talked about doing a lot of one on one work with and, and the individual people's results. Now, the people that you have that you had listed um, as your testimonials, are they often I don't know, uh, like, are they mostly one-on-one -on -one with you or did they have like a group session oh, that they were doing? It's, it's both. It's a mix of both. Um, but for example, like in the offer I just made, uh, I said that on week seven, you get a one-on-one -on -one coaching call. So there's also a possibility that you can do that with your group coaching. So let's say if you say, well, it's going to be a group coaching, but then let's add one coaching session per month for everyone. Then you also have that hybrid type of experience with them. So you could still get that one-on-one -on -one intimate, private, uh, you know, conversation with your members. At the same time, they profit from, you know, the group setting. And also for you, for your pricing, then it's easier. Then you can lower your price, but then have more people still share your message and then have that one-on-one -on -one, uh, part that you could add to your, to your offer. I mean, you decide, you decide what you want your offer to look like. Other questions? Oh, 
there's a comment in here, Anna, to put things into perspective in Costa Rica, a psychiatrist charges $100 for a session, psychologist 50 and a coach $30. Oh, okay. Okay. Got you. Got you. But then again, like I would say the, um, the coaching, I know that sometimes like the coaching, uh, certifications or, uh, you know, when people need to have hours and stuff like that, then either they're not paid or they do like a very low price to get, to get started. But then eventually, as I said, like with, you know, with the reputation or with the referrals that you get, you can always increase your price slowly to get to what you want to reach. So there's no shame into starting lower and then increasing your price. I feel that it's important for you to feel comfortable with what you ask for your services. But what I, what I don't like is when people offer their services for free. Always be paid for your services because, I mean, you have your education, your life experience, your personality, all that stuff that you're doing. It's worth to be monetized, definitely. Don't offer it for free. Other questions? Fabian, I just want to add something here. I want to thank you for the integrity with which you're addressing this part of the conversation, because I think that we've needed to talk realistically about what do you charge in various parts of the world? How do you do that? And do it with an open heart, a generous heart, not feeling as if you're compromising yourself by offering something for less than you're used no, to. Oh, no. yeah. And so I just, I want to thank you because this is not a conversation that a lot of folks have. And the fact that you are, and and it, it, but for number one, for me personally, it increases my trust of you as a, as a coach and as a person offering this service, but also is an important conversation, especially for this community to be able to have. So I just want to say thank you no. for, doing, for the way in which you have shared yourself and the integrity with which you're doing your work. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you to, for saying it. <laughs> thank you. Other questions? Oh, wow, it's one sharp. Yes, we did just <laughs> hit, the, hit the moment. Look at so that. <laughs> congratulations. Thank you for sharing with us so much, Fabienne. It's been a pleasure. Um, I think I will you know, let, let people know they can hop off. Maybe if uh, we can stay on for any uh, questions afterward if anybody has any follow-up I did want to say you know we have our upcoming um, event in September we're going to go on a field trip so there'll be details coming out about that very soon uh, we'll be going to the Jose Figueres Ferrer Museum in La Lucha and uh, it'll also be a uh, part of our ongoing fundraiser for the Rahab Foundation which we have running uh, more details to come on both of those via email, what's up. Um, uh, so watch your inboxes. And then in October, on October 15th, we'll be meeting back again, again at the Restaurante Tinho uh, with Glenda Padilla on cybersecurity and awareness. Uh, very timely since we've had some hacks in Costa Rica. Uh, and in November, we will again do our our goods and services fair, and that will again be in person at the Restaurante Tinho. So very excited to get back in person to doing that. And it'll be a time when everybody can do their offers for um, what they're selling and uh, what they're experts in. So thank you, Fabian. It was great to have your expertise and sharing about what you do. And we thank you so much. All right. It was my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Until next time. Thank you, Fabian. Okay. We'll see you in person soon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, Dr. Bernard was was logged in with two different she was i think yeah. she she got uh let's see i'm just gonna take there we ah, go here we go yes oh. thank you yeah. oh that was, was fun. wonderful you're so heart-centered and that's, that's really special for us i think um knowing you know where 
where each of us can be at with our potential coaching careers. It's mm-hmm. great. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. And a lot of questions. I love it when, you know, people are really interested, but Mm -hmm. like from, from what I see or what I felt is like, there are many people thinking about it and they Mm -hmm. should, I mean, they should. And it's also like, you know, something you could start on the side, even if it's like a hundred dollars, I mean, it's, it's a hundred dollars, you know? So I think getting into the nitty gritty of like what kind of platforms, like, you know, do you just use Zoom or do you, you know, use some specialized software that you have to then pay for? (laughs) Like that's, I think that's what people are a little bit worried about is how much does it cost to, you know, buy into, to the idea. Um, But, but even Google, if you have Gmail, I mean, you can do Google meet and Google mm -hmm. meet it's free. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to do Zoom, I mean, Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Yeah. So right now, I, I guess I'm just curious, like, do you have like a certain number of clients that you carry all the time or, and how would you fit us in? How would we schedule um, if we end up having a, a bunch of people yeah, register? So that's, that's actually the, the, the thing I, I forgot to like, cause I stopped for the link and then I didn't come back mm. with the slide. So what I can do is uh, send you the information and then you can put it on the group. Uh, yeah, I was talking, I was thinking about starting September 27th okay. and it will be in the evening. Cause I know some people are, are working. So it will be at 8 PM Costa Rica time. Ooh, okay. Isn't that really late for you? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm sure my <laughs> son, I'm sure my son is asleep and I usually don't uh, sleep before midnight. So I'm so fine. it works for you. Okay. So it would be, it'd be Tuesdays at, in the evening. Yes. But I'll, Tuesday you know what? Nights. I'll make a flyer. Mm-hmm. I'll make a flyer and then I'll, I can send it to you so you can include it into a communication or something like that. Yeah. Perfecto. Okay. Yeah. That sounds yeah. great. Awesome. Well, we'll look forward to that. Thank you. I will post on YouTube on our channel. Um, It's kind of a heavy document. So our, you know, the file, so I could share it with you, but is it just as good for you to have the link of where it lives? Uh, No, actually, I would love for you to share it to me so I could, uh, I could do snippets of videos sometimes Mm -hmm. for promotion. Uh, But without what I haven't asked, like, if, yeah, if you're putting it on YouTube, then people don't, don't mind if their name is there because I was wondering if I should cross the names or no I mean we yeah they they know that they're they're being recorded and they've agreed to it on zoom I mean and and they know that we posted on our youtube okay okay yeah you can share it with me I guess it's something that I should say at the very beginning right this will be posted to our youtube channel but I haven't been doing that yeah yeah just to make sure that some people you know like I guess, I mean, when it has to do with a network, it's not, but sometimes it's kind of personal and people don't want to, you know, they don't want to share everything. Yeah. We didn't get into anybody crying or anything. So I don't think it'll be a problem. (laughs) Sometimes it is. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. We we did. Let's see. It was, we, we did record a session in January. It was like a planning, you know, what have I accomplished in my life? What am I going to accomplish this year? We did kind of a planning session. Uh, One of our members is a, you know, gosh the name completely escapes me this second but uh, the big guy uh, all the coaching <laughs> I mentioned him to you the other day no I can't remember um, Tony Robbins uh, she's a Tony Robbins coach herself yeah. and so she's done this for us many many years running and it's wonderful but people really get personal and they do cry and and there was you know I did record it and I'm like we can't share this it, it was no. very personal yeah so <laughs> You yeah. know, there are moments like that where, yeah, <laughs> of course, the call later. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, so what I'll do is I'll work on it now and then I can send it to you via email. So you have it today. Okay. Um, and then we see, we see what happens with this, but I, but yeah, I would really love to do this. It would be really fun. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm at the point where I can, but I really got a lot out of, you know, what you were saying to kind of streamline and the fact that on social media sometimes we just talk about the personal stuff or pretty pictures and we don't talk about how we help people so I'm actually a little embarrassed but you were right on the money where um, some people 
know that I live in Costa Rica, but don't know that I put together amazing trips. And so they'll say, oh, we're coming down. We already have everything arranged. I'm like, why? Yeah, exactly. Wait a second. <laughs> okay. So that means, that, and then I'm like kicking myself like, okay, well that actually shows I am not sharing my value as a travel planner and an amazing support here in Costa Rica. Like, duh. But it, it is, you know, it's, it's like one of those okay, that's, that's where I need to be right now on my presence on social media for my regular business. Now, what would yes. I do differently with the coaching business? I'll get to that later, but you know. uh, yeah, exactly. But yeah, like, only that, I mean, will probably change something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That yeah. aha moment was really. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Awesome. All right. All right. Enjoy your weekend. You too. Thank you okay. so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>